So Ineos did the deed and sacked Ten Hag during his third season in charge. And let's be honest, by the end, Ten Hag, he did seem like an old dog who just needed putting down. It was the kindest thing. Ineos letting it drag out as long as it did, it just seemed cruel to me. But what exactly went wrong for Ten Hag at United? That first season was more than solid. The run leading up to that Carabao Cup final, it was selling us some dreams. And obviously winning a trophy in his first season, even if it was just the League Cup, that was a solid base to build on. Yes, there were some blips along the way, but that was acceptable then. The problems came in his second season though, where after a very strange transfer window for United, United never really got going all season long though, and throughout it, we saw Ten Hag play a very direct style. It led to these basketball type matches. Pharmacy. And United truly were lucky to finish 8th by the end. The FA Cup win saved him and it was understandable, but mainly just because there was a real lack of options in the summer to replace Ten Hag. But as we know now, they probably could have just gone with Amarim in the summer and saved a lot of this heartache. But they decided to give him another crack and we were expecting big changes. But these never came and nothing clicked yet again and we still played that very, very direct style and... I think, honestly, I've saw United's worst ever performance in probably a decade in that performance up against Spurs. Ten Hag wanted to write it off, but I simply couldn't. That red card didn't change things. Spurs came to Old Trafford and they absolutely dominated us, even when it was 11 v 11. Jay, you painted a pretty bleak picture there. Um. <laughs> that should have been the final straw for me, but Ineos dragged it out just that little bit longer. The main issue for me before you start to talk about the poor player profiling, the poor in-game management, the awful press conferences, I could go on. The biggest problem for me was that Ten Hag never even seemingly tried to get us to play like his old Ajax teams. Like surely that's why United hired him in the first place. An error can come to an end. First season we said, oh we can't possibly play out because we got De Gea in between the sticks. But then in his second season when we brought Onana in, we still saw pass maps like these up against some very mediocre teams. When he said he couldn't implement that Ajax style of play at United, alarm bells started ringing. When he said he wanted to make us the best transition team in the world, it had me fearing the worst. We thought we were getting a pep disciple to challenge City's dominance in more than one game anyway. <laughs> you are so funny. But we got something far from that in season two and three of his reign, there was never a hint of any sustainable style of play at United. He was just trying to clamber for uh, in week by week to try and get as many wins as possible. We couldn't see a long-term vision. Uh, we didn't stick to the plan. Uh, what's the plan? Uh, the plan is huge. Tell us what the plan is then. The plan will be the same. People loved comparing Ten Hag to Arteta, but for me, throughout his time at Arsenal, Arteta constantly showed a consistent playing style even when he didn't have the players, you could see this was a style of play to get behind. Ironically, he hasn't won many trophies with it, mind, but it showed a reason to back Arteta season after season. We didn't see that with Ten Hag. This is what I wanted so badly under him. Just show me something. But instead, I got more deep box defending, more long balls out from the back, struggling against poor teams, and quite frankly, when we came up against someone half-decent... There was no hope in hell in United getting a consistent run of results. In his third season, after this many games, seeing United in 14 spot in the league, absolutely nowhere near good enough. I still can't believe that people still back him and still talk about sticking to the plan and sticking to that process. Absolutely crazy for United to be sat in 14 spot. You've got to question the manager there. Core meltdown in 10 seconds. Nine, eight, meltdown averted. Good boy. I thank him for what he delivered at United. I wish him all the best in his future. But there's no doubt in my mind now that United have done the right thing and moved on from him. Ineos have obviously gone with Amarim for now and they've placed him in more of a head coach role, giving him far less power than what Ten Hag at United. And it's a change that definitely needed to happen at United for a very, very long time now. Interesting times ahead. But again, with Ten Hag is a case of another manager failing that constant merry-go-round 
that is United's manager situation at the minute. This time, though, I do feel Ten Hag kind of has a large portion of the blame to share on himself. Yes, he wasn't helped, obviously, with the hierarchy when he first came in at United, but he wanted that power. He wanted the, the transfer ruling, and he got it. He got the back in. 600 odd million pounds spent, and United sitting in 14 spot. How can you defend that? These players didn't down tools again with him. That's the one thing he did have throughout his whole reign. There were some very, very high points there, but also some crippling lows as well. I wish him all the best, as I've said. Let me know down in the comments down below what you guys thought about his reign as a whole. Do you think it was successful or not? Let me know, guys. As always, please subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.